This is beyond exciting. This is revolutionary. This is a breakthrough. Those words are overused. Not this time. This is the real deal. Uh, let me tell you how this all happened. So in mid-January, I was contacted by a company based here in New York called Tympanic Membrane Technology. And they said, we have this device that can radically improve human hearing. And I said, don't more, blah, blah, blah. And they said, no, just please come into our offices. We're on East 23rd Street, and we will do some, show you some, some of our stuff, some of our ideas. I said, OK. Hopped on, hopped on to mask, hopped on the subway, went to their office. Beautiful, sweet, beautiful. And they, some PR people met me, and they were giving me some materials and stuff. But they said, um, I said, I wonder, I don't really understand. Looking at all your material, I don't really get what this is. And they said, well, first we want you to meet Dr. Ronald Kersinger. He's a ear surgeon, and he's going to tell you what's involved. And I said, surgeon? Wow, now I'm really interested. And basically, Dr. Kersinger told me that what the tympanic membrane technology is, is basically a nanotech eardrum. It's eardrum replacement surgery. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, you, the, we have developed this eardrum that is so light, it extends the range of human hearing to 50K, to 50,000 cycles. Now, normal human hearing ranges from 20 hertz at the bottom to about 20K, at least when you're young, as you age, you have less and less high frequencies. But this nanotech eardrum combined with some very extensive modeling and DSP extends human hearing to 50,000 hertz. Now, they said it's not going to hit 50,000 for everybody. It's going to depend on other factors. And we're also going to do some modifications to your inner ear, to your... I said, my inner ear? <laughs> I said, yeah, do you want to participate in these clinical trials? Because we're just you know, about to uh, put this on the market. We've gone pretty far. It'll probably come out in 2022. But uh, would you participate in this trial? And I was like, wait a minute. You can take my hearing, my 71-year-old ears, and give me hearing <laughs> to what, what bats here to, to 50,000 hertz? They said, yeah, no problem, easily. How could I say no? Right. So they, they uh, arranged for the surgery. Now they said, we're going to do one ear and you know, check it out and do some tests and check out the DSP and all that stuff. And there's going to be some soreness. We're going to do one ear, wait about two weeks, see how you're feeling. And uh, then we'll go ahead and do the second ear. Do you have a preference, left or right? I said, no, right ear. You can start with my right ankle. But anyway, uh, yeah, so we booked some time to do this, and I made some videos in advance because I didn't want to be... And I, and I kept it a secret from you guys because, well, they had an NDA, non-disclosure agreement that I signed, and now I can finally tell you about it. So, but anyway, the surgery was pretty painless, and it was really fast. It took about an hour for, this, for the first year, for the right ear. So they, they said, you know, yes, at first, it's not going to sound great. It's going to be kind of distort a little fuzzy, but we just have to go in and fine tune the DSP. So be chill, you know, I said, okay, you know, you're screwing with my ears. This is how I make a living. So I hope you guys know what you do. They said, we've already done it with over 500 people here in New York, and we've had incredible results. So I said, okay, this is, this is incredible. I mean, I never thought that this would be possible. I always wondered when I was young and I could hear to 20K, could I remember what that was like? And because it changes so slowly over time, no, you really, you can't remember. But when I had, when I recovered from that first surgery and I went in and they worked on the DSP a couple of times and it was getting better and better and better, I was like, it was already way better than I heard before. You know, and I was going like this, I like, didn't hear out of my left ear because it was kind of weird. But anyway, <clears throat> they said, uh, it's, yeah, a couple of times and it'll be cool. And well, uh, I don't want to tell you yet. But anyway, I went back for the second year, like I said, about two weeks later. Some, and that one, uh, the recovery was faster. And because of the information they had about the first year, the second year recovery was faster. And the DSP tweaking and stuff happened like in the first visit. And when I left that first time, the office 
And I went out into the streets of New York City. First of all, while I was in the office, the thing that I was hearing, and I was hearing with one ear, but hearing it in stereo really helped because my brain was like trying to figure out why is it? So anyway, um, I could hear people talking, you know, like three rooms away from me. You know, I could hear talking. I could hear the air conditioning system. I could hear the, the lighting fixtures buzzing. I could hear all these sounds that were, you know, always sort of there, you know, but they were just like, I was like Superman. I, I had super hearing and I could just resolve all these incredibly tiny differences. So then uh, they said, don't get on the subway because don't, don't expose yourself to loud sounds. I should have said that after the first year. Don't hear any really loud sounds for a while. Take, take the Uber Pat back home to Brooklyn. And I did. But um, <clears throat> so I go out in the street, you know, and I was hearing like, trucks rumbling from like four blocks away. I could hear the subway because the subway is nearby in Brooklyn. You know, a block away from the subway, I could hear the train coming into the station. I was just, just had the ability to hear deep, you know, and as my brain was processing all of this, of what this all sounds like, yeah, when I'm on the street, I was just aware of this huge palette of sound, of textures of high frequency things coming out of you know buildings and stuff and I could hear very low frequency sounds and that was really interesting because they were so clear there was no muddying of those low frequencies everyone was so clean those nanotech ultra 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 light eardrums could just respond so quickly so I was just digging it so okay so I go home and I didn't really listen to my system or do any reviews. I took time off from all that. But as I was into it and I listened to the, to the uh, Cornwalls, the high frequencies were pretty darn good, very low in distortion. I, my head became a distortion analyzer. I could just hear subtle distortion. When I listened to speakers with conventional front-mounted dome tweeters, they did not sound clean. They sounded fuzzy kind of blurry they were just I could hear a breakup coming from those tweeters so easily where before I never noticed it but because the horns the tweeters the compression drivers in the clipses are barely moving when they're making high frequencies they were markedly clearer than any dome speaker on a direct radiating baffle front baffle that was really impressive and the mid-range again on the on the uh, clipses was really so much better than I thought it would be. It was really phenomenal. I went to a friend's house that had Magnapans. He had um, 0.7s. And they had that same ability to play loud and stay really clean. And when I listened to normal box speakers, cones and domes, there was a fuzziness to the sound. They have to move more, you know, back and forth, higher uh, excursion to produce a given sound pressure level. And they just sounded tizzy, breaking up kind of sounds that just were kind of, I'm thinking, oh, this is going to really screw up my, my, my job here because I'm going to have such this uh, ruthless opinion of various speakers and electronics and tubes had a sound that second harmonic was really pleasing uh, in a very dulling kind of way, actually. Um, solid state amplifiers tended harder and faster. Uh, actually, the, the first wide amplifiers, especially the SIT-3, that one just sounded so much more beautiful than I thought it would, you know, that I ever thought of it before. So that hearing the differences between amplifiers and cables, by the way, my wife and I, we did some blind tests where I, I was, I literally wore a blindfold and she was just, I'm changing a cable, I'm not changing a cable. Oh, I could nail it every single time. Definitely. So my ears became hyper acute, but I wondered that what I was hearing, unless you already had the surgery, the nanotech surgery, um, my opinions really wouldn't be all that relevant to normal hearing human beings, right? So maybe this was all a plot so to sell more of the tympanic memory and technology drivers, in this case, eardrums. I'm sorry, I can't go on. I'm just kidding. It's, it's April Fool's, and I just had the best, best time cooking this thing up. So uh, <laughs> that's it. I don't know. If you've made it this far and didn't realize that this was a joke, 
Well, thank you. Thank you for putting up with me. Um, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This continues to be the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you like what I do, and, and all the other <laughs> reviews I do are fact-based to some degree, but this one is pure fantasy, right? And every April 1st, I'm going to do one of these things. I did one last year on 3D printed LPs that went over really well. That's why I wanted to do one this year. Anyway, if you like what I do, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Hit that button right, right down there. And when you do, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time there's an incredible new episode. And then what else we got for you? Well, there's always a playlist for speaker reviews with my 71 year old ears. Speaker reviews and headphone reviews and electronics reviews and music reviews plus interviews with incredible people in the audio business and just fellow audiophiles. I shouldn't say just fellow audiophiles. Some of my best friends and most interesting people I've ever met are audiophiles. Even before I had this YouTube channel. This is my life in audio. This is why it's my life is because I just love my peeps. I do. I think my work here is at last complete. So thank you for putting up with this April Fools today and I really do hope to see you back here again very very soon. Bye-bye.